one salad only boys only with salad salaman great best deck there we fucking go took all the way up until maintenance Oh, we're playing everyone's favorite cybers archetype, Salad. I assume because it's everyone's favorite. You should all know what most of these cards do by now, so I'll... I'll... I won't go over every single card detail, you know. Obviously this is a, you know, this is a cybers deck, so we have room to run the 12 hand traps. And... These Cosmic Cyclone, I'm not, I'm not gonna front. If Runic was not a deck, these would be Pot of Desires, but because I'm a coward, and I, and I want, and I don't want to, I don't want to sit through just uninteractive games where I, where I don't do anything. I'm just putting in two Cyclones in here. But realistically, you could probably get away with just Desires in this spot. And for, I guess less con less conventional choices, or salad ratios, Triple Foxy and Triple Spinny. Uh. I mean, this isn't the micro, this isn't like the Kotak, the half Kotak or Heatso Turbo thing. This is pure salad, so because we're playing pure salads, I want as much access to Gazelle as possible. So, this is where Foxy comes in, you know, if I don't open Gazelle, this will dig me three cards deeper, and the level threes lets you access Mirage, which lets you get Gazelle from the deck. That's a, if that way, if you just draw a bunch of level threes together. And Buffalo is the best normal summon, obviously. Y'all, Buffalo chain link one, Bailings chain link two, Walker Mash is the best play in the game. So uh, two Doctor Igar, these are important for making Baguska. I I mean you could probably cut this to to one since we're not really desire. Just there's no risk of banishing it. But at the same time, I guess if you're worried about Runic, you know. Having two copies of all the important salads at least is is a is an okay idea. Falco, uh, Falco, <laughs> Falco is how you win is how you win the grind game. If you don't kill your opponent with the access code update thing, Falco it's basically represents every turn you either get a get to recur a gazelle back to your hand or you get to recur. A salad trap, and we're, which is you're gonna by turn three basically if you don't kill them you can you're gonna end on sunlight wolf plus double salad trap plus extra resources most likely if you have an ash you're gonna add an ash back to your hand every turn as well there, like no decks out grinding salad there and about the the traps rage. Everyone knows Roar. It's it's, like, it's an Omni, but Rage is like especially good with uh because of against the Runic matchup. Since okay, first of all, you you never want to use the first effect, where it's just send one Salad Migrate from hand just to pop one card. That's not that's like desperate situation, or like if you draw it off Heatso and you don't have a Salad on field. But majority of the time, when you when you want to set up Rage, you want to have a you want to have a soul linked. That that means like a a salad uh, link monster that was made using its own using itself as a material. You, like you want to have a co a sunlight wolf like that. So then you can use the second effect of rage, which you target the sunlight wolf and then you pop cards equal to its link rating. So which means you get to pop two cards and. The good thing about that is it does rage does not target it, so it picks the cards of resolution. So even if they chain Hugin, Hugin will not be able to protect their floodgate or will will not protect their fountain because you just pop the card, you just pop Hugin along with the card you want to pop, and then Hugin no, cannot protect it. So yeah, that's pretty huge, and the fact that you can set this to your field, you can get this every turn. That's like you you are out grinding the runic matchup if they let you play even a little bit. So another random tips, I guess, with the salad cards. Circle, 
make sure you have toggle on when you play this deck. So majority of the time when you activate circle, you activate it in the draw phase. Just just to play around draw. Draw should not affect this deck whatsoever. And I know it's being played because of stuff like Runic and Despia, so just play around that if you can. And the or the other way to activate circle is, is if you already have Flame Buffalo and another Salad Monster, you, just, you uh, summon F Buffalo first, make Bailing, and then try to see if if they waste the Hand Trap on the Bailing. Because this is Master Duel, a lot of people will will like Ash or Imperm your Bailing, and then after you give them the Response Window with with the Buffalo turning into a Bailing. And if they whether we raise the hand trap or not, then on the same chain you use Circle as chain link three, and that still plays around Droll. That still lets you add Gazelle to your hand, and still lets you summon out Gazelle after Buffalo discards a Salad. So yeah, and I guess Will is. It's an extender when you draw into. Like it's another way to play. Or, we're not running mirror or like foul, so this is will is like going to be one of the main ways for playing around the mirror jade banish on our normal. But will like, it's also very important in the grind game, say with uh, Falco, because every turn if you have will up, you can will back the Falco, and then Falco mostly ready. Falco can bring back your trap or, or a circle every turn, like so. Yeah, because you know, Will is a continuous card, so the monster reborn every fu every fucking turn. You know, that's that's nice. It's for the extra deck. This, is, this stuff is non-negotiable. This is the Salio, the Baguska. Baguska is the main, you know, Baguska is the main boss monster of the deck. Ironically enough, you end on this a lot. Triple Bailings, triple Sun Wolf and Grind Games come up all the time. Lingo Rebo, you need this to make. You need this to make heat soul with hands, and it's also just good against trap decks. Update access is obvious. Transcode is for the update access thing. Uh, heat soul. So this isn't the heat soul turbo though. You're not trying to end on heat soul. Heat soul is like plan B. If you have an awkward hand without gazelle access, or if you get hand trapped on your gazelles, then you then you go uh, you would uh, pivot to making heat soul. But usually you want to end on a sun uh. Sunlight Wolf and uh, Trap and maybe a Baguska. So, double two slash mage. So one slash mage is obviously necessary. Obviously necessary. But the second slash mage is the fifteenth extra deck slot. So, but about the heat. So a lot of times, your turn one, if you have if you have to pivot into making a heat soul, you're going to use a splash mage to get there. So you want the you want a second slash mage later in the game, just to just to have you know if you want to, it helps you go into the safer update jammer access OTK that I'll probably gonna do a combo video to show to show the better way the best ways to combo with this deck because there's a lot of ways to combo with this deck and some some are let's say safer or better than others. But realistically, this could also be because the fit. It's a 15 extra deck slot, so this one will come up. The slot will come up the least often. But it could also use Almirage in this slot in place of the second slash mage. I could have used Almirage a few times. It basically turns any of your nine hand traps into a salad monster. So when you have a grave full of grave full of stuff like Foxy or Spinny. Spinny or Jack Jaguar, you can still uh, use those as resources even when you don't have a salad monster. And uh, oh yeah, the, uh, Foxy is like another reason for why I think that this 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 deck is was particularly is particularly good is Foxy itself outs any floodgate you want pretty much like. Oh, another thing is Transco Talker. It's a continuous effect. Your opponent cannot target any of your co-linked monsters. 
with card effects. So again, you know, this deck's just like perfectly, just somehow perfectly countered to play against Runic. You, sometimes you just have literally a Transco talk route co-link to anything. Like, co-link to Heat Soul, co-link to Sunlight Wolf, hell, it's fucking, you can, it works even if it's co-link to a Bailings, right? When, when you do that, the Runic cards such as Flashing Fire and Freezing Curses, they're both turned off. They basically cannot out your two monsters on the field. They're, they also cannot target and destroy your your uh, your monsters with Gary. Even you can just continuously run at Gary. Like Gary will do nothing to help them stall for time. So like freezing their freezing curses and the flashing fire basically can only summon monsters to the extra deck. And obviously you can only they can only control one of these. So they're just gonna have a lot of they, you, you tend to have a. Uh, Runic spells that they can't even use when you have a co-link transco talker, which is which is pretty funny. And I you'll see in a replay, I literally beat down <laughs> I literally beat down a runic deck with with a co-link transco talker for multiple turns where they couldn't out or do anything to it. And last thing I'll say is this is something that will comes up in mass in Master Duo specifically, not really in the TCG, but Silent Hill Great Sanctuary's effect, uh, where one of my uh, monsters battle, I can pay 1k and then make one of my Link monsters attack 0. So, <laughs> this is how you this is how you avoid dying to Numeron. Well, let's say you have like a Sunlight Wolf out and they, you know, they're Numeron, they have Lightning Storm, Storm, all that, all that stuff, so where all you're left with is a Sunlight Wolf on field. They go in, try to crash with their Numeron gates into into say your Sunlight Wolf, and then you just you just use the Sanctuary effect to make uh, gain gain eighteen and make this attack zero. So then then the Numeron will attack over this for one k, and then you'll be at like seventy two. But then they, they can only increase their attack one, so they only have six k worth of attack left. So you, so you, this is how you live through. This is uh, sanctuary is how you live through four Numeron attacking your Sunlight Wolf. Now, obviously, you know these are Numeron players; they always have limber removal, so so that shit doesn't even matter most of the time. But you know, you know, occasionally, you know, one out one out ten times. They would kill you. you. You could sanctuary save yourself. Because I know, like this gets annoying whenever you attack with your monsters, and you're like, "Would you like to activate sanctuary?" No. Why would I ever want to use this? Well, that that's like the one spot where you would want to use sanctuary's effect. So, so on that note, we're gonna get into the the replays. So this is actually a replay from Duelist Cup since. You know, I use Sal because I expected more of this of this kind of matchup. Opponent activates one day of peace into Kaiser Coliseum. And multi roll. You already know we're in for some fun and interactive gameplay. So at this point, I just tried I just tried to thin my deck out as much as possible before drawing with Buffalo. We'll go chain link one Buffalo, chain link two Bailings, see if they have response to Bailings, and when they don't, chain link three circle. Add Spinny, and then we're doing a discard Foxy and draw Foxy and Spinny. Uh, thank you very much. On the effect of Spinny, they're gonna chain Destruction to summon out their Hugin. Just uh, kind of kind of sucks that that blocks our Foxy summon altogether because of Kaiser, and they get that found into their hand. So I'm gonna attack over the Hugin main phase two. I'm gonna try to. Do something with Spinny, summon Gazelle, and I'm gonna Whittle Anchor it, so I guess I can't do anything. I'm gonna set the Imperm in the Kaiser column, and on that turn they're gonna they're gonna do the Runic Fountain stuff. You know, I I, I don't really have a way to out this to stop them, and they're gonna 
Afterburner or Gazelle, which is fine. No ray access, so we're just gonna hard make Shizuku with Hornet Drones. Not not attacked by Bat Bailings to try to lock us under Kaiser. Fortunately, we have the Infirm for, for the Kaiser this turn. So now I'm going in, discard Floxy, pop their Fountain. They don't have a response, so they, I don't think they're drawing any Runic cards right now, so I'm gonna see how far I can get. See if I can maybe threaten an OTK. Unfortunately, they have another Widow Anchor, so they have two Widow Anchors set. So I, the most least I can do is I can force them both out. We're gonna go into the Transkill Talker now, and they have to Widow Anchor the Transkill Talker to take it. And so, fun fact Update Jammer has a second effect. When it attacks, you can negate the effects of all other monsters on all other cards on the field until the end of the damage set, and then when this kills something, you get the burn for a thousand. Get used to seeing this effect a lot, this this match. Because at the end phase, after they do their multi-roll stuff, we get our transcode back. Oops. Animations. We get our transcode back. And because I get to choose the zone that transcode comes back in, it does now co with update jammer. Now they cannot ruin destruction, they cannot ruin flash, they cannot flashing fire either of these, they cannot Afterburner's target, so they cannot out this with Afterburner's either. There's no Striker monster in the link in the game that's big enough to run over this. Zeke targets, so Zeke can't get rid of this. Their only out is if they play Janning Ways, and by the looks of it, when they go engage to add Woodranker, I don't think they're on Janning Ways, so... They, I literally do not think they had an out to this in their entire deck. You know, I couldn't see their deck list, obviously, because it's Duelist Cup, but... Judging by how they played, you know, we're gonna imperm the now Semid Kagari. And you're gonna poke for a 15 of Hayate, not even bother dumping anything. Because what's the point? Go into another Shizuku. Add back to engage, I don't really care. They're gonna add a bunch, they're gonna add more useless cards. And I'm just gonna punch them. And they can't do anything about it. Call by the Ray, just cause. Yeah, put them on a, like a two turn clock from here, bring back the Gazelle and, you know, give them a Widow Anchor target, I guess. Uh, I don't know why I did that, honestly, this is not necessary, I just gave them Runic Spell targets for no reason. But yeah, get engage for engage, I'm just... Oh, my Maxi's finally alive on turn six. You didn't add a Fountain? Oh, you know, they're just trying to draw cards, you know. And I draw into a bell. I don't run bell anymore. Because it was just a one-off. It was like the 40th card filler. And I just replaced it with another spinny for consistency. And here I bell the fountain. But realistically, I could have just ashed the fountain instead. And would have done the same thing. As in, this fountain didn't, resolving didn't matter. Doesn't gauge. Resolving does not matter. Because they're just going to link these off into Zeke and realize Zeke targets as well and, <laughs> you know, that, that that's a win con against the Runic Striker decks, you know, just transcode beatdown. Oh, you know, I'm only out here bringing you the absolute best matches. Opponent wins the die roll, passes on the empty board. Alright. Uh, normal summon Buffalo. I don't activate Circle early because... Sometimes there are bozos that ash the bailings, and, and then I can just circle after that to keep it safe. But they didn't, so I will circle as chainlink three, and then they will veiler my bailings after after they know I have a circle that is gonna search me a gazelle. Okay. I mean, I, I I guess you know you you do you. So anyway, I disc discard Jack, draw two hand traps, then summon gazelle out, and. I still feel responses, so I'm like trying to halfway threaten an OTK while also maintaining resources. So we're going to Sunlight Wolf this time. And then, so I can summon out the Jack Jaguar to add back to Gazelle, and they imprint that, so 
you've gone through two hand traps that are used in the just the absolute most correct spots. Anyway, I'm gonna go into Splash Wave to see if they have anything else before going for it. And of course they have Nibiru, so yeah, you know, just, just three hand traps. You know, we, we were never doing anything that turn anyways. We're gonna max you to draw a couple cards, draw draw no salads, that's gonna be a theme of this game. And I'm getting beat down by Nibiru. I draw into uh into more Veilers. Sick. And we're gonna get Dustered. Uh, I mean it sucks, but at the same time these cards weren't doing anything anyways, apparently. And next turn we draw <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, that's... man, I love hand traps. Ooh, Alibur. Well, that, that Alibur is not resolving at, under any circumstance, so. We got we got one more turn to draw a solid monster. Okay, thank, thank God. Now we can ignore the Maxi because of Ash. You know, just the greatest interaction in Master Duel. Now. Gazelle will dump Spinny. I, I feel like I don't feel any more responses, so I feel pretty safe. So we'll go into our bailings now. Add the sanctuary that we never got all activated. Not realizing that I could already summon Jack Jaguar by putting the Silent Wolf back. And this is just an OTK, because there's I I highly doubt he has any more responses or hand traps after this. So transcode update. Yeah, you know the drill. And yeah, that's uh, that's the end of the game. Well, I don't I don't always show you know I don't always have the perfect gameplay. I I tend to misplay it a few times. This this is gonna be one of those games where where I misplayed quite heavily, as you'll see later. And but then. Uh, I can fall back in the Salad Grind game to still pull out a W. So anyway, our opponent shifters. Fun. Duality reveals double Dreaming Town. Add to Dreaming Town. Okay. Summon Rubina. I'm gonna infirm and they do not have the admin. So yeah. Now I'm gonna summon Foxy. Try to reveal something and all we and we get a gazelle for next turn, so it's a sick. Don't do this. I know he added. I know they added Dreaming Town. They have a Dreaming Town in hand, and I attacked over the Rabina. So now I'm at a position where if they have any bird in hand, I'm screwed because I I can't veil them on my turn. I can't use the rage that I just that I'm gonna be set on on my turn. So I set this, and then I get I, I get hit with the immediate punish. They have a the two can in hand, which is like. The worst one, because now Tugan can add back the Dreaming Town, and they get the, the Rabina, and they get to do all this in the end phase, where my Veiler is dead and my Rage is dead. So yeah, don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna talk, contemplate and scooping because that, that, that was such a fuck up on my part. We're gonna tribute my Rage away, summon the End Pen, and get the Advent for some reason. I, I guess they're feeling confident, and they try into an extract. Oh my. Into a duality. Duality is gonna get them a, a Stree. They just have all the names now. Summon Stree. And they're gonna preemptively advent away their end pin, you know, to get the map. But now, you know, I, this is a throw by their part. We're just count, counter throwing against each other. They're gonna summon Rabina first. Then they're gonna summon Eaglin. Then that gives me an opportunity to Veiler them. Now that their zones are locked. And they don't have that tribute. So now they're gonna put their stuff in the defense and then crash into my Foxy themselves just to get more birds banished for the Dreaming Town next turn. So anyway, I know that's a Dreaming Town set. So first action, main thing is only going to Linger Rebo, turn turn that shit off. Going to this gazelle and they have to, they have the max C2. Jesus Christ. Okay, so I'm I'm just gonna end. I'm just, I, I should have summoned this defense, honestly, but you know, it doesn't matter because they, they exceed summon into assembled knight and kill in flu. You know, when's the last time you see a flu summon from the extra deck? So anyway, before I end the battle phase, I'm gonna chain Maxi against Flu so they don't go into Zeus. <laughs> I'm not even sure they're on Zeus to be honest. I don't think Zeus was even a good play, but 
but it's funny. So now, my turn. I'm gonna summon out the, the spinny, link the gazelle into a Baylinx to finally add the sanctuary to my hand on like turn five, turn six. Uh, dump the sanctuary to summon out the foxy, pop their map, go into Mirage Stalio. Now, I'm not going for access code OTK because, knowingly enough, a symbol Nightingale stops access code OTK because they can just use it as a quick effect and then they take no more damage and it can't be destroyed. It's quite annoying. So, we're gonna go with the Sunlight Wolf route. Ross Sally will put back their, their symbol Nightingale and we're gonna be getting it for some, a small bit of damage. No sanctuary anymore, so I have to link the Sunlight Wolf with the level of Gazelle on field. To, but now I can add back the Rage that I dumped with Gazelle, and now we're on an Omni plus Effect Veiler, so I'm feeling good from, about myself now. They're just gonna end turn. Alright. Top that Cosmic, get get that Dreamy Town shit out of here. So re summon Gazelle, sum, summon Buffalo, go into Splash Mage. Splash Mage will bring back Foxy, and this is an OTK with a rate of a Roar set. So yeah, this is this is how to throw a throw counter throw a game against your hardest matchup in flu. But <laughs> you know, unfamiliar game states happen in this game, and you just gotta navigate through them. Okay, this is now playing against the what I believe is the scariest deck in the game right now, and that's Adam Emancipator. Thankfully, they're gonna get rid of their Maxi Bros to get an Analyzer. And I hate that I have to. I almost have to hand trap their Analyzer, because if they get a Roxy's or a Guardian, then I'm screwed, because then my other hand traps are eff effectively baited. They have the Seeker as well, so. At this point, I'm praying. I'm praying. Do not have Grass, do not have Block Dragon. And some. They go into the transfers and I was really worried. I was like, oh shit, that's Earth Monsters in the Grave. Oh, thank thank god, it's just Supplier. By some miraculous act of god, our opponent did not open Grass or Block Dragon. Which means we get to play the game. Rawface add Gazelle. Gazelle will dump Spinny. And we'll resun back the Spinny to go into Mirage Stalio. And Mirage Stalio will use to summon out a Jack Jaguar. And Jack is going to go into a Bailinx. We'll link those two into a Sonic Wolf and trigger Stalio's effect to put back the Transversor into her extra deck. Resummon the Jack Jaguar. And Sonic Wolf will add us back the, our Ash Blossom. So, fun fact did you know Jack Jaguar does piercing? I, I just learned that in this duel. Now we're gonna turn the Jaguar into Bay Lynx, use the Sanctuary. And then reincarnate the Sunlight Wolf. So we can add back our circle for next turn. And we're gonna set three. So now So now I'm feeling good about myself. They're summon a Roxy's. And I I'm just gonna ash the Roxy's. I I wanna say I always wanna save Caldwise for a potential block dragon. And they're gonna battle for we'll protect our Bailings with another Bailings. And phase add another gazelle. So now now this is great. We can I'll add back the circle again with Silent Wolf. We have a roar set, so now we can go for an access code OTK with an Omni Negate as protection. So we're gonna go into update jammer with these two. And Buffer load to draw because you know why not update and bailings into Transco Talker. Transco Talker will bring back Sunlight Wolf, not because I misclicked. Our opponent has Nibiru, but again, we have the roar set, so we're completely fine. Going to access code, and our opponent sees the writing on the wall. After I do some more silence of like resetting roar with Falco, dumping with Gazelle, you know that's a that's a that's a sick play.
I know that I didn't matter as much, as much in this game because we, we just killed them on this turn, but that's an important interaction to know that if you have a Falco in deck, at any point, you can summon Gazelle to dump the Falco to reset any any salad spell trap you you have in grave. So again, just more more ways to recur your disruption so that you'll always have multiple forms of disruption in engine like for your opponent's turn. I'm gonna record a combo video I think I think next. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Sad Mangrid combo video 2019 deck for 2023. It's gonna have every. It's, it's gonna be comprehensive. It's gonna have every combo line in it. It's a one stop resource. You know, for me too, because I, I wanna play this deck in the future. If I leave it, if I just leave it for a while and I wanna refresh myself, I know I, there's gonna be a resource for me where I can quickly pick it up again. So. So look, look forward to that.